Fox News alert and NBC News firing Today Show host Matt Lauer after allegations of sexual misconduct. We have just learned the anonymous accuser and her lawyer met with NBC executives for hours on Monday night. And then early this morning, the network tweeted this. Matt Lauer has been terminated from NBC News. On Monday night, we received a detailed complaint from a colleague about inappropriate sexual behavior in the workplace by Matt Lauer. As a result, we've decided to terminate his employment. Meantime, on Capitol Hill, more Democrats are now pressuring Michigan Congressman John Conyers to step down. Let's bring in our panel, syndicated radio talk show host Leslie Marshall. She's also a Fox News contributor and conservative radio host Kevin McLeod. Thank you very much uh, to the both of you to talk about this. What a big day uh, on mm -hmm. so many fronts. I mean, just this is just it, it caught me by surprise. I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. um, sadly, not very surprised, but nonetheless, very disappointed. A source tells Page Six, and I want to read an NBC staffer came forward with a claim that Matt sexually assaulted her at the Olympics. There have been rumors rumors about Matt having affairs with subordinates at NBC for years, but those were believed to be consensual. This incident in Rio was not. Leslie, affairs with subordinates. Laura's, uh, Lauer's been working at NBC since 1997. Uh, rumors are rumors, and we don't know the facts, and Matt Lauer has not given his own statement in his side, and there are two sides. But you have to wonder, was there ever an investigation before now, Leslie? You know, it's funny, Julie, I was just in a meeting and um, off the air, we were just talking about due process. Um, you know, everyone uh, is innocent until proven guilty. Yes. And I think for somebody to just come out like NBC did and say that somebody who's been with them for so long is, is terminated that uh, without being suspended and having an investigation, uh, the evidence that was put forth must have been, I would imagine, just uh, not so specific and uh, so revealing as not to be questioned to the um, accuracy of the allegation, but it must have been quite revolting uh, as well. I, like you, uh, was very surprised because, and this could have been also, Julie, part of what uh, this individual wanted when they met with their attorney. It could have been, you know, uh, I want some money and I want him gone, and, and then they may have uh, acquiesced to such. I'm thinking there's got to be evidence, physical evidence, tapes. Mm -hmm. Pictures. Exactly. I mean, something very damning. Uh, you know, NBC News chairman Andy Lack revealed that it appears that this was not an isolated incident. In fact, in a statement, Lack says that this was the first complaint, however, about Lauer and his 20 years at NBC. Uh, Kevin, I get the feeling this is just the tip of the iceberg. You know, it's kind of interesting. There's a lot of uh, talking points going around with people saying, you know, not all men are like this. And yet, this headline, in some sort, has maintained the top space in the editorial of our uh, news reporting for the last seven weeks. And it is cut across every industry, it is cut across every corner of society. And I think that the problem here is that you see someone like Matt Lauer, the first thing my wife said to me this morning was, well, if, if a man will cheat on his wife, if, she, if he mm. will step out on her, you already are dealing with kind of a compromised conscience to some degree. Where you, draw, where you draw the line in terms of the moral code is then just an issue of perspective as opposed to whether or not you're willing to. And people that are in, empowered in, in particular and entitled uh, and have great power over others seem to feel more entitled to do this kind of thing over That's the longer period of time. I mean, that is true. I mean, I always say once a cheater, always a cheater, and it doesn't have to have to do with relationships, just in general. And, and when you are cheating, uh, you feel that somehow you are empowered and that you are better than that person and you don't care and you are invincible and you are a narcissist. But Leslie, you know, for every woman who comes out and tells her story, it feels almost like me personally, a piece of me is almost, and it's hard to explain, is relieved. Uh, since I never told my story, and I'm not about to start that right now. This isn't about my story, but for there are many women out there watching right now who have their own stories that they've chosen to keep private. And I get it, it weighs heavily on all of us. But at the same time, we have to acknowledge this anonymous woman and give her credit for having the courage to come forward and tell hers. Uh, would you agree, Leslie, this is the first time in our lifetime that harassment in the workplace is no longer tolerated? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, one of the things, Julie, and, and I, like you, have been the victim of this, I was saying if I named names, I, I could fill up a page of a magazine easily mm -hmm. uh, throughout not just my career, but life, daily life, walking down the street, things that have been said to us uh, as women. Um, you know, right now, there is uh, this morning when this report came out, probably here in New York City where I am today, a woman serving coffee at a diner who's been harassed by her boss for years and looks up and thinks, 
well, maybe now I can say something. Maybe now I can come forward. Because this happens not just at these, you know, a, a big network or on Capitol Hill or in Hollywood. Uh, this happens, and this has been, and, and I've said it before, I think since Adam and Eve tolerated society, right. in a sense, has enabled these uh, men to continue the behavior because they have not been stopped. And, and that is changing, and that is a victory uh, for women, and, and I hope that others will come forward. I think quite frankly, everyone should because these people have to be held accountable. Yeah, and I have to just say one last thing about this. You know, this is not a question of why now are you speaking up, whether it's five years, 10 years, 40 years. Mm -hmm. It's not about why now. It's about no more. And, and that is, I think, the message that needs to be sent, uh, that a lot of women who are coming out now after years uh, perhaps kept silent because they wanted to protect their families. They wanted to protect their careers. Uh, Kevin, I hope that is taken away from this for those who might start to spread doubt uh, when accusers like this come forward. Well, I think when women are brave enough to go on the record and give their name, even, even in the anonymous sourcing with NBC, you know that it's a real person because their attorney's involved and they had very real conversations. I think that takes tremendous courage. And I think, mm -hmm. it's only a slight correction to what Leslie said, I don't think that it is now no longer occurring. I think the exposure is, so, is showing how deep the problem is. I think the only thing that's gonna correct this in the future is an adjustment right. in our societal worldview and moral code. Yeah, and it's not a partisan issue because, as you know, uh, John Conyers, multiple sources telling NBC, ironically, right. there's mounting pressure by Democrats for him to step down. It is not a partisan issue. It, it, zero tolerance is a bipartisan issue. Uh, thank you both for talking to us. Appreciate it. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, Julie.